Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's make lots of noise for our guest, Eamon Farron. <sighs> Welcome to Comic-Con. Thanks for having me. How, how's your day been so far? You've been since being pretty chill. I'm very chill today. It's my first Comic-Con ever, and I've just been upstairs chatting to people. I think it's amazing. It's a, such a cool atmosphere, but it's my first time. First Comic-Con ever, wow. Ever. And you chose coming to one of the biggest in the UK. Of course, where else? So how, how are you finding it so far? Like, have you had a chance to interact with some of these fans yet? Uh, I just made my way down from upstairs and it's amazing. Everyone, there's like so much creativity and passion and skill going on with costumes and stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I know there'll be a few dressed as the knight and the witcher and uh, just know. here, just hiding there. <laughs> but it, is, it must be amazing seeing all of these people that dress up as characters from something you're involved in. Yeah, it's incredible. The fans are the best part of it, really. And so it's always nice to sort of have some forward engagement. You know? mm. And uh, if you think back, you well, it was first announced you got the role in 2018 five years ago yeah. and now you're here season three's coming up as well you're meeting lots of fans did you ever expect that audition to lead to all of this no i didn't know what i was auditioning for when i auditioned i auditioned for Geralt's role to start off with and i didn't get that which was shocking to me uh and then i made my way down to this other unnamed character that, that was like a mercenary sort of fighter killer guy and sent it off, didn't expect anything, and then, yeah, uh, got the job, and we ended up in Budapest. It was really cool. It's been a wild ride. Did you know it was for The Witcher? Because I know a lot of times casting calls are, it's just a very brief description of the character, and they don't give you the name of the show. Did you know it was The Witcher from the start, or was it just open? No, it wasn't The Witcher. I, I think it was like an unnamed Netflix fantasy project or something like that. So, And I didn't find out what it was until deep into the, the audition the filming. process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. it's like Season two, I was like, oh, The Witcher. Oh. Were you aware of the books or the games before? This no, show? not at all. Uh, and so once I got the job, I had to do a bit of a deep dive and educate myself pretty quickly. But I had no idea about The Witcher world. And so it was, uh, it was a quick learn. Which kind of brings me on to my next question. Obviously, you've got the books, you've got the games, and then obviously the TV adaption does kind of go in a different direction. How much research did you want to do on the car? I know some people don't like to look in case they copy it too much and like the own spinner. How much was it from the books and the games or was it more you want to do something unique in your way? I think the books were definitely like a jumping off point for me. I needed to get my head around the source material because that's always important. Um, I knew from the beginning that the, the adaptation was always going to be that, like an adaptation of the books. Um, so you always have to, as an actor, you always have to leave room for that adaptation and that whatever the writers want to do with that. But I needed to get across that arc that Kahir has of, you know, his journey from uh, death, grief guy to, you know, love a savior guy. So I just wanted to get myself across the source material and then each season I get the scripts and we see where we're going. And it must be exciting for you as well because it's a character that goes through such a range of like season one very dark menacing season two more humanized as an actor do you enjoy having roles like that where you can really get your teeth into yeah that's the best that's why i wanted to play kahir because he has that perfect hero journey a broken hero journey and um, as an actor of course that's i get to play every gamut of every personality type i mean we start off with obviously a very dark menacing conjuring of series um, and then through season two as you say there's a breakdown he gets he's sort of a broken man and then we, as we move through season three and hopefully beyond we get to see the fully transformation of like what his love and faith can transform him into so it's it's wonderful to be able to play all that and we are all very excited for season three as well <laughs> yeah so if you're going woo yes I and we can't talk, to, just to give you a heads up, we cannot talk too much about season three, NDAs, everything like that. You can, we'll get some hints later, but we can't talk too much. But uh, jump back to season one, a lot of outdoor shoots, a lot of night shoots. Was that something that really interests you? Or was it like, oh God, not another night shoot, I can't do this. Not yeah. outdoor in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> 
Yeah, night shoots are always the worst, and I'm very bad at them. About 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, I start to crash. But the, the physicality and the horses and the fighting that Kahir does is the best thing for me in the whole uh, shoot. I, the, the training and the horse riding is amazing. And being in Budapest, in like the fields of 2018, it was an incredible experience. Like that, That's some of the highlights, is the physicality of him. So how much training did you have to do beforehand? Was that a lot of the time or was that between filming? You had to do like some of the fight choreography, the riding the horses? No, I sort of arrived as I was and then it's up to the stunt team and the horse team to sort of get me up to scratch. So I spend about a month before each season getting my ass kicked in a, in a stunt training room. And the horse riding has been amazing. I learned very quickly and have been really loving it ever since. But it's the stunt training that, and the fight training that's really, they have to kick my ass a bit to get me into shape. But it's amazing, like, it's so fun. It must be a great thing to have on the CV, so if there's any other roles you can say, actually, I can kick ass, hire me. Yes, and a season three thing that I can say is that the, the fight choreography in season three is incredible, and I get to do some, some really fun stuff in season three. Well, just The Witcher in general as well. Like, I remember it was the first episode really set the scene with Henry Cavill in walking down that alleyway. An in. incredible fight, yeah. And Wolfgang, who choreographed that fight, choreographs the... His whole team comes in for season three and the, the, the stunt work and the fight choreo and, and fight work in season three is incredible. Have you had any injuries from it where you've just kind of went, oh, wait, no, or have you been quite lucky to uh, In season one, I fell off my horse once and landed on my shoulder. Uh, in front of all the next Netflix executives, so that was a bit uh, terrifying. But uh, but no, everything's really safe and everyone's really good at what they do. So we throw everything at it, but everything's super safe. So no terrible injuries to be speaking. That's always good to hear as well. But it just looks so amazing. Like obviously for you when you're filming, you don't see any of the special effects or the, the, how to do the dark light and everything like that. What's it like seeing like all of those late nights, long hours of filming? where you might do one scene for like six hours, but then scene it on the, do you actually watch yourself or are you one of those ones that are kind of, nope, can't watch myself on screen? No, I, I, I watch myself, I, I'm not that precious, but the thing is when it all comes together with the CG and you know everything they do to it in post, I think you just look better than you think, I mean, I look better than I think I look. I always feel like that kid from Australia that wants to be an action star when I'm filming it, but when I see it, it's actually like a pleasant surprise. Are, are you shocked about how good you look? Like during the fight scenes, obviously you're not connected. Let's not go crazy. I, I'm not shocked by how good I look. I just think I look better than what I thought I was going to look like. I, I think you look pretty. Do you think you look pretty good during the show? <laughs> eh? I, I'm not trying to flirt here. I promise. It sounds a bit weird. But um, was there any highlights from season one when you were filming? You were just thinking, wow, we have something special here. This is really going to put the Witcher brand like more well known. I think... I think watching Anya and, and Freya really kind of uh, come alive in their characters and discover everything they're doing. I remember late night in Budapest, I'd met Freya and she was, I think she was, you know, she was so young. She was about like 12 or something. No, she was probably 16. Uh, but she spent, we spent the whole night doing a chase scene through the, 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 the fields and I was on horseback and she was screaming over and over again. Um, and I could just watch her sort of becoming Siri, and it was like those moments when someone you can see someone forming an iconic character. It's cool, and uh, and that's what I remember of Budapest: just Freya screaming in a field for ten hours. And that's what also makes a good show. You can tell when the actors, the crew, the cast are all getting along. They're making something magical. And what was it like working with some of the others on the set of season one? And suppose season two, you actually got to work with a lot more people than sort of what you did yeah, in season one. Yeah, I mean, one. Kahir's a pretty lone ranger, but I, I've been really lucky. I get to work very closely with Mimi and Anya in season two, and they're in, there's a lot of great theatre actors, and Anya and Mimi are, are two of those people that come from a background in theatre, and it means that, I mean, those, those women are such good actors, but they also can play and hold so many stakes that this world requires, and... Yeah, I mean, acting opposite Mimi and Anya is just easy because they're so good. And it just makes your life easier. So much chill. easier, yeah. I can just chill out and squint my eyes. So how, do you feel there is much difference between, like, TV, movie, theatre? How do you kind of prepare yourself for those types of roles? 
I think it's just uh, the difference is the medium and the audience. So in theatre, you have to reach the back. Um, and in film and TV, depending on the genre, it, it's, it's more about your audience is that camera. And so it's, I think it's just about scale. But I think at the end of the day, also, truth is truth. And if it's true, then it works. And you can do whatever you want, you know, as long as it's true. And I suppose the, the thrill of the theatre, having the audience there in front of you, do you feel like that kind of motivates you to kind of push yourself for that performance? Yeah, totally. There's an energy that the audience creates and hopefully all art should be a collective catharsis and energy and, um, and uh, yeah, you, you, I miss that from live theatre. But you also get it from TV when you get to come and meet some people that love the show. I mean, that's the opportunity that you get in TV, you know? Yeah, because that's the next thing I want to mention, the fact you would have filmed season one, there would have been probably about four, five, six months between when you filmed to get all of the, like, background editing, ed like all the special effects. Is it tough having that weird thing and there's a lot of pressure on this show, it's a well-known brand, everyone's excited for it. And what was it like when it finally released and you saw how critically acclaimed it was, how much the fans love it? Was that kind of just a, oh, thank God. I mean, I've never been in a TV show like The Witcher, so I had no idea going in what to look out for. I just sort of watched on and, and I still watch on, like, uh, you know, it's, Season to season, it's always, and there's so much, I mean, today you can see there's so much to watch out there that it's just, a, it's a humbling experience when someone comes up to me and says they love the show because it means that they've chosen to watch it and spend time with it and I think that's the greatest compliment. So every season is a new one and, and every season we all get the nerves to hope and we hope that everyone loves it. And obviously as well, uh, quite recently as well, Twin Peaks as well, Let, let's not mention the ending, that was a bit uh, of an interesting one, but what was it like working on that show as well? And the, not to spoil it too much, but the, the ending, let's just say. The ending? Yeah. My ending? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Twin Peaks is amazing. Uh, I got to work with one of the greatest masters, storytelling masters in David Lynch, and he was incredible. The whole cast and crew have worked with him for 20 years plus, and they work with him on every project that he does, and. It was, you know, a gift and a, and a very easy... He casts people and then unleashes them into his world and you just get to play. And it, he's incredible. And was it not daunting knowing that, obviously, again, very famous brand and knowing that a lot of the cast, crew, all have worked together and you're kind of coming in. H how did you feel kind of coming into that? I mean, it was daunting on the plane ride over because I just got a phone call saying, if you can be here in two weeks, you can do the thing. So I had no idea about what we were doing. And then it wasn't daunting when you get there because everyone's just so sweet. Like Kyle, there's no ego, everyone's really good at what they do and it was a really beautiful collaborative experience. And again, in your job role, you get to go all over the world to do these. It must be great being able to say, oh, I've been there, I've been there. Is that one of the things that make you love acting? Uh, yeah, I guess it's one of the surprising things. I mean, I started off acting in, in theatre in Australia and never thought that I would be here. So it's a wonderful byproduct of being able to act. The travel is amazing and the meeting the people is amazing. And yeah, on my downtime, I just love to like explore the cities and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's an unexpected plus. Definitely, I, I am a little bit jealous of the jet set going around. But yeah, don't be jealous of, of the well. jet lag though, yeah. The jet lag sucks. I flew in last night from Australia, so I'm like super tired. So you just got here last night for yeah. today? Yeah, of course. Wow, what's the time difference between? I don't know, dude. They're asleep now. <laughs> That's all I know. Well, as long as you don't fall asleep here. No, I'm fine. Well, I'm fine. We do appreciate the fact you have come all the way from no, Australia. Yeah, of and, but obviously, will you be doing a lot more flying for the promo for The Witcher very soon? Or uh, I'm not sure. I know nothing. Um, I don't. I haven't heard anything about travel for promo. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I, I have no idea. I'm trying to get little bits out of when we can expect. I honestly don't know. I will tell you stuff. I just don't know that. I promise. As long as there's no legal teams listening or anything <laughs> like that, that'd be very helpful. Um, I feel like I've took up a lot of time. I'm very greedy when it comes to the guests. Would anyone like to have some fan questions? If you have any fan questions, we do have the microphone over there. Because I've still got a whole load I can go through. Is no one going to be brave and ask? Go on, Jaskier. We, we know you can do it. Once one goes, everyone else follows. You look amazing, by the way. Yeah, your costume's wicked. You will have to talk very loudly into the mic. Hello. Ooh. There we go. You also look very handsome today. <laughs> that that was what, the him, hit, not no. me. Yeah, but, but
both yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to say uh, we love The Witcher. It's an amazing series. If you can talk right into the microphone. Love The Witcher. It's an amazing series. And is there any little hint, any tiny thing that we won't understand now, but looking back once we've watched it, once it comes out, that you can just a tiny, even one word, something. For season three? Yeah. Come on, come on, you know you want to. He is going to be very limited on what he can see. <laughs> I mean, I think that... Ha, are you, have you read the books? Yeah, yeah, okay. I have, yeah. I think uh, this season for Kahir especially is very much the turning point. Oh. Um, and you're going to see that. The hands oh, yeah. are coming. Huh? It's the hands are coming. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> But it's a turning point. <laughs> he is breaking apart. Ooh, okay, lovely. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank, thank you. It must be so tough talking to people like, can you give me any hints? Is there anything you can tell? Well, it's me? only tough because the fans are so over every single detail and they're very clever. So they can trick me every time. So it's just keeping up with the fans. That's the problem. Especially if they've read the books and it makes yeah, you think, was that in the they're show all over yet? It. Was yeah, yeah. that there? Was this said? Exactly. Now, I do actually have some fan questions as well, because I reached out on social media, and some of them are very interesting. So uh, we have uh, Lila Cravens. Uh, it's a two-part question. Good. Uh, what has been your favorite character to play and find the most interesting and difficult? And then the second part of the question is, also, do you like pineapple on pizza? Well, pineapple on pizza should never happen. That's the first answer. Uh, and the most interesting character I've played. Uh, I've played a lot of great characters. Uh, I think he is definitely one of the most complex and challenging. Uh, but I also, I, in drama school, I played Hamlet, and I think that that's one of the most. And he reminds me a bit of Macbeth. But uh, playing Hamlet and Macbeth, any sort of Shakespearean thing, and that's why I love doing The Witcher, because it does have those Shakespearean overtones. And it's, it, you know, they. They're, they're everything in one person, so it's always fun. Would you come back to maybe theatre here in the UK? Because like, there's a big theatre. Sort of, would you come to the UK and do a bit more, like do some theatre here? Or? Yeah, as soon as I can, I'd love to do theatre in the UK. Um, the Witch has taken up a bunch of my time for the last five years, but as soon as I'm free and able to, I'd love to. That'd be great to see. Right, another fan question. Uh, this is from a really interesting name, A Weird Glow. Uh, what were your thoughts about the Brook Kahia's character development and how that was translated onto the show? I know I've kind of covered that a little bit, but were there any aspects where you were really kind of desperate to play from the book that you really wanted to see in the show? Um, I think that's an interesting question. I think the answer and the honest answer is that I hope that uh, I think the whole the arc as a whole is the most interesting thing to me, because if you if you isolate Kahir in each season so far and in the future, they are their own little journey. And I think as a whole, it will be great to be able to at the end of the whole arc look back and see where we've come from. He obviously makes anyone that's read the books will know that he makes a severe sort of like huge arc through the whole series, and that's. There's not really one element specifically from the books that I hope that we get to think. I think the whole arc is interesting itself. And it's, it's the machinations within that each season that I concentrate on, which is the most interesting thing to me. So I think the whole arc is important, not just isolating one book or season. Now, I don't, yeah, I'm sure you can say yes or no to this, but will we see more of that arc coming to fruition in season three? Yes. And that's all you can say? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I hate those NDAs. It's me too. All me too. The fun. Me too. Not long now. I think what have we got three weeks. Three. Yeah. Wow. But at least then, see, come back in three weeks. We'll all come <laughs> back here. We'll meet up just outside, and then we can talk more about yeah. what they expect in season three Deal. as well. But was there any sort of character that's in The Witcher? Well, as Noi said, you auditioned to be The Witcher. Is there any of the characters that you've kind of went? I'd actually really enjoy that kind of characters story arc playing them or I've do you want this, to go for the witcher i've had this exact conversation with anya uh she always says to me that she would be better to play she would be a better kahir than i am and i think i would be a prettier yennefer than she is so i think we'll in season six or seven we'll do a character swap 
I'd actually really and let the fans decide. Yeah. yeah, I think you'd look really good for like the hunchback and like and walk along season. No, she's done that. I just want to be hot, Yennefer. Oh, you want to be hot, Yennefer? Yeah. Season six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we could do it. I'm just trying to picture you like just doors open wide, you in a ball gown, walking through and doing some magic and. You never know. You never know. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Maybe we could make a fan <laughs> film in the future where we. I think we I'm digging a hole I don't want to be in. <laughs> The thing is, so fans will hold you to account I, for please. that. Yeah, I, I can't have, wait. Have you had any weird fan experiences? Uh, or have you been, I know you don't really come to Comic-Con, so you have dodged quite a few. No, I've never had a weird fan experience. I mean, I, no, not really. I mean, I ho maybe hopefully I will someday because I feel like every fan that I've ever met has just been really generous and don't, don't clever. Say, I, and hope. <laughs> I know what will happen at Comic-Con now. It's like, I brought you socks. Yeah, or something. Oh, I've never got a gift in my life from a fan. Well, you never know. Comic Con, it does happen a lot. Uh, yeah, I hope. Now we've said this. If anyone goes out tonight, no. buy some nice presents. Is there anything you're after? Anything on no. Amazon wish list? No, their <laughs> presence is present enough. And obviously, you're going to be here all weekend as well. Yes. Just slightly jet lagged. No, I'm fine. Coffee, it's fine. Confident, fine. Just nap on the flight there. Yeah. And you've got photo ops as well. Do you think anyone's going to be doing any weird poses with you in the photo I ops? I hope so. I mean, you know. That's what photo ops are for, right? Yeah, have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. Like, they'll probably have swords and everything like that, so you'll yeah. get the kind of player. That'd be around. great. Yeah. Well, I think we'll bring it to a close there. Thank you very much. So I much. want you to go back to the autograph area so you can meet all of these lovely people so they can come and see you. It's been an absolute pleasure, and thank you for coming all this way to see us as well. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming out, guys. And nice to meet you. You can see he's absolutely great. Please go say hi, get an autograph, get a photo. But um, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant weekend. First Comic-Con experience as well. You'll have to have a wander about. I will. Thanks for, thanks for breaking my cherry, CJ. No, no. Um, I'm very proud of that. Maybe <laughs> season three will get you back next year. And then Done. we can talk a bit more about this character Yes, then we can talk more about that. Yeah, and what gifts you get from all the fans. Deal. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Eamon. Thank you, guys. <laughs>